Welcome one and all to the questionable gaming with me, Ole. And today I will be starting a brand new series called The Game Lore, where I will explore in-game lore and history of different game series and ultimately will end up utterly confusing you. Hopefully not. This time we'll be kicking off with the part 1 of exploring game lore from original Might and Magic universe, which was part of Might and Magic games 1 to 8 and Heroes of Might and Magic 1 to 3, covering the events leading up to and including one called The Reckoning, which essentially wraps everything in one big explosion. Arguably Might and Magic 9 along with Heroes of Might and Magic 4 could also be included. They are dealing with the post-reckoning events and are fairly self-contained, hence are not part of this video. The chronological timeline of events will rely on a calendar of planet Enroth, where Might and Magic 6 to 8 and all three Heroes games are taking place, purely because it is most documented. Before we can delve into actual events, I will bring you up to speed on key concepts and the scale of the universe. If, by chance, you were only exposed to the Heroes of Might and Magic series, or otherwise just have a vague hearsay understanding of the universe, you might just be surprised by what is to follow. Playing Heroes of Might and Magic, you could surely believe that game's genre is high fantasy, a kind of epic quest completion trope, which relies on medieval-esque world technology level and, of course, magic. However, the universe created by John Van Cunningham is actually a science fantasy. That's right, space and ancient spacefaring civilizations are integral to the events transpiring in every single game of the series. This is especially true in all of the Might and Magic RPG games, as in final stages of each game, a party ultimately discovers a facet of larger picture and gains access to technologically advanced weaponry and locations. In most game cases, people blissfully unaware that they are living in the artificial worlds altogether which are parts of a massive space carriers. Take Worlds of Zin, for example. The world is literally a slab of land with artificial atmosphere floating around in space. There are three important races out there in space – Ancients, Creators and Kriegans. Ancients are essentially good guys here, with Creators said to be aggressive and Kriegans even more so. There are beliefs that Kriegans were created by creators, I wonder why. But there is no direct evidence pointing to it. All of the interstellar travels is possible through a network ancients have built, called the Web of the Worlds. Throughout the initial five Might and Magic RPG games, we will be following the trail of Sheltem and Korak, artificial entities manufactured by ancients. Sheltem was to be an overlord and sage of the planet Terra, but had faulty programming where he classified ancients as a threat, so Korak unit was dispatched to apprehend him. Enroth, another significant planet, is located in the same space sector as Terra, which is called Spineworld Rim. It features three continents. One of them, aggravatingly enough, is also called Enroth. Second being Antagorich, it's where the kingdom of Erethia is located. The last one is Jadam, which becomes important during Might and Magic 8 RPG game, when Agent of the Ancients, Eschaton, arrives in order to well, you will learn that in a while. Lastly, we have to discuss several space concepts, which are popping up here and there throughout the series. First of them is Varn, or Vehicular Astropod Research Nacelle. 
If you are like me, that did not make a legal sense, so here is a Wikipedia explanation. Nacelle is a housing separate from fuselage that holds engines, fuel or equipment on an aircraft. In our case, equipment would be an entire world. All of the action of the very first game in the RPG series Might and Magic happens in the simple medieval world of Warren, and only much later do we get to understand the scale of things. Might and Magic 2 follows the same party of heroes to another self-contained world in the same space carrier as Barn 4 previously discussed. This one is called Kron, or Central Research Observational Nacelle. Through similar to Warn, their creation methods were drastically different. Warns are entirely products of ancient technology, while Kron well suffice to look at four corners of the map, representing four elemental planes. We will cover it in more detail later in the video. Lastly, a third type of nacelle is the world of Zin, or Xylonite Experimental Expansion Nacelle, home to the events of Might and Magic 4 and 5. Distinctive feature of this slab of land is that it is populated from the both sides. It is widely understood that later ancients wanted this transformed into a proper spheroid by expanding an empty space inside Zin. In the timeline below, my initial thought was to separate events happening in the first five Might and Magic RPG games on the left side and the rest of the series to the right, purely because of two largely self-contained stories they tell. This proved to be slightly problematic in certain ambiguous areas, such as those describing events impacting both sets of games. Regardless, let's delve right into it. This video will cover the first segment, called Time of Wonders. In the future part 2 will address remaining two, Age of Monsters and Age of Men. Recollection starts a millennia before Silence, when the empire of a race, later to be known as the Ancients, rose and grew in an unknown homeworld close to the central regions of the galaxy. Technology and instrumentation were discovered and utilized for the first time. Ancients were tolerant as they grew and encountered other civilizations. They thrived on cooperation and welcomed only those who were interested in joining forces. That is, until the encounter with another similarly advanced race, creators, occurred. While sharing similar expansion goals as ancients, their methods of expansion were brutal and aggressive. Thus, the inevitable conflict between ancients and creators began. At some point, ancients will manage to fend off the creators and force them out of their territories, but at a great cost. Most of the outskirts worlds would be ravaged by war and rendered uninhabitable and unable to sustain life. Moving on, 10,000 years before silence, planet Enroth was created as a result of a long battle between elemental lords. It is speculated that most spheroids might have originated this way, but there is no concrete evidence for that. At the same time, elemental lords are forced into a 10,000 year long truce by the gods, but most likely it was by the ancients. This presumes that ancients either had the power to influence elemental planes or outright created those in the first place. Some time after that, ancients have wrapped up with creators and have devised something called the Great Experiment, an enormous effort to engineer life and rekindle it in the scorched outskirts of colonies. They would construct massive space carrier vessels that would be capable of transporting artificially created warm worlds and seed them into planets. 
The first part of seeding planet Terra was to use carrier Sigbath Zera to transform aquatic and technical ones along with the artificial entity Sheltem, which decodes into special heuristically enhanced life form tasked for environmental management. As name implies, he was to be an overseer and sage of the planet. Next, we will cover events happening at the same time in different places. I'll go through Enroth on the right-hand side first, and then we'll focus on the events concerning Kron Carrier. At around 350 before Silence, Kringan race violently attacked Ancients and targeted their web of the world's communication and transportation network. Shortly later, a certain Varn was beamed down to planet Enroth, into the Enroth continent. It is debatable whether the Varn itself served as a continent, or it was a smaller module that only carried biological life. Regardless, this event has become known as the Crossing. Continent Enroth served as a base for a colonial government, up until and shortly after the silence. They had access to factories that floated in planet's orbit, called Heavenly Forges, which were capable of producing powerful artifacts. The government fell to an uprising shortly after the silence. In Antagorich, an empire of Brakadun was formed and ruled by the wizards but they were dissolved by oppressed barbarian tribes before the silence. Next, a seemingly important but falsely associated with the silence event called Days of Fire, which happened one day before the actual silence. A year or so before the silence, a group of bandits stole a shipment of weapons from the Heavenly Forge, but got apprehended by Ellen mayor of city of Eliant, on the continent of Enroth. Some time after, a group of Eliant's council conspired to overthrow Elan, killing his daughter in the process. Unsuccessful, they fled to a place called Viseas, where Elan caught up to them and engaged in battle. His son was also killed there. It was at that time that Elan had lost his mind to despair and activated one of the Heavenly Forge weapons in his possession. This resulted in a large-scale destruction and eradication of everything in a considerable radius. The colonial government had immediately reached out to Ancients for help, and were met with a deafening silence. In the legends, centuries after the Day of Fire is cited as the event that angered the Ancients and caused the silence a communications cutoff. But we know that the actual reason was the Kriegan invasion described earlier. As a last step in this part, we are going to take a look at events leading to and happening during first two Might and Magic RPG games, which are revolving around a Kron space carrier and one of its warrants. To give some perspective, this Kron was an in route to planet Terra as part 2 of the Great Experiment, bringing terrestrial warrants to aquatic world of Terra. Events described here will be shown relative to Kron calendar, as there is no good way to reconcile potential counting periods between it and Earth. Remember, earlier I mentioned that Kron had a different creation method to regular warrants, and here is the story. Ancients just created a huge empty nozzle and either waited or somehow prompted elemental lords' interest in it. In the year 100, water elementals were the first to appear, led by Aqualander as their ruler. Not long after, in year 190, Air Elementals appeared too, led by Shelvend, and engaged in a deadlock war with Water Elementals, which in turn prompted Aqualander to instruct his vassals to summon Fire Elementals, which they did, 
with Piranaste as Fire Elemental's leader. Though he quickly revolted against Water Elementals, and of course, at that point, we had a three-way deadlock at our hands. Inevitably, in year 348, Earth Elementals with Gralcor the Cruel in charge have invaded and forced three others to join forces, as Earth Elementals seemed invulnerable at first. In the year 428, attack method requiring cooperation of all water, air and fire had been devised, but it was too late to change the course of the battle. The same year, Gralcor and other Earth Elementals pulled together and form a giant landmass. Soon after, Earth Elementals assumed command of Kron. In year 500, Gralcor, with help of all other Elementals, started trying to perfect Kron landmass. And by the year 600, a modern Kron landmass and landscape was established. In the year 700, Ancients began injecting humans into Kron, and they quickly adapted to the Elementals, while Elementals were paying little attention to humans, considering them insignificant. A mere 70 years later, however, Gralcor catches up and wages war on humankind. At the same time, powerful human spellcasters join together to create an artifact, Orb of Power, capable of elemental manipulation. In the year 790, human king Kalon challenges the elemental lords and, ten years later, banishes them each into separate corner of Kron and forms barriers around those plains and seals them with four talents which were part of the Orb of Power. Kalon keeps the orb to himself. After 30 years of banishment, Aqualander masters the art of magic and creates what is known to be the first dragon, unleashes it on the land of Kron. Meanwhile, on the planet Terra around the same time, Korok captures Sheltem and begins flying him back to Ancient's base. In route, Shelton sabotages the spaceship and they crash on one of Kron's warns, Warn 4. Shortly after events in Might and Magic 1 take place, and the party of heroes of Warn 4 finds out that Shelton has disguised himself as then King Alamar. Shelton is forced to flee Warn 4 into Kron world. Korok and the adventurers follow suit. Now here is where it gets really interesting. There is actually time travel going on while playing Might and Magic 2 RPG. Let's follow the events in sequence. Number 1. In year 130, King Kalon sets out to kill the dragon, and is mortally wounded, because power of the orb alone without talents was not enough. Before dying though, he invokes a flood, and dragon, ironically, drowns as it does not have wings. Number 2. In following years, chaos ensues on Kron, and then a party in pursuit of Sheltem arrives. After completing a series of quests, they discover that Kron is equipped with innate local time travel device. Number 3. Heroes teleport back into year 830 and assist the king slaying the dragon. They returned to now changed present. In the altered timeline, Sheltem managed to leave the copy of himself inside Kron's programming which then derails the Kron trajectory into the nearest star, and then escapes. Adventurers successfully put the Kron back in course to Terra. Korak pursues Sheltem a space battle ensues, which leaves both in near-terminated state. Sheltem manages to fly back to Terra, where he forces himself into a stasis field for the next 1000 years to regenerate. Korak is forced to return back to Kron and do the same there. Sometime during that period, Kron actually reaches Terra and seeds it with some of the warrants it carries, thus creating what are now known as the Isles of Terra. Warren 4 from Might and Magic 1 
is not part of this procedure and is implied it has a different destination. And this, my friends, concludes the period known as Time of Wonders. As mentioned earlier, part 2 will deal with two post-silence periods known as the Age of Monsters and the Age of Men. If you found this video enjoyable, click a like button, leave your thoughts down in the comment section, and hit the subscribe and bell buttons to get notified about future videos. Thank you all, Ole out!